There are around a thousand species of wattle tree in Australia, but only one of them interests me the most. That's the silver wattle, Acacia deldata. It can be found in South Australia, New South Wales, Tasmania, and in the state of Victoria, where the reserve I call my office is found. The silver wattle caught my attention when I started studying the agile antichinus, a small carnivorous marsupial. I found that the silver wattle's yearly cycle intertwined with the agile's life. The silver wattle's yearly cycle is an interesting one to observe. In December they drop their seed pod. In January they start to form the next generation of flower buds. So there isn't much gap between seed pods dropping and flower buds forming. By April the stalks are well developed with tiny little buds at the ends. They will stay that way until July, until the buds start to swell. In August the buds burst and a sea of yellow floods the reserve. The Agile is quite fond of the silver wattle. It provides a lot of what it needs to survive. Silver wattles hollow out easy, giving the Agile a place to nest. They also attract a lot of insects, which is the Agile's main diet. The Agile eats the insects, helping to keep the population under control on the silver wattle. So they both benefit from each other. The silver wattle's yearly cycle marks major events in the Agile's life. When the silver wattle flowers in August, it announces the breeding season for the Agile. Near the end of September, the silver wattle's flowers start to fall. For the Agile, this marks when the joeys are born. October, the seed pods start to form, and for the Agile, it marks another event. This is when the joeys are left in the nesting hollow. In the middle of December, the silver wattle starts to drop its seed pods. And for the agile, this marks another major event. This is when the joeys start to venture out of the nesting hollow for the first time. The next time you go out photographing and filming wildlife, Take notice of the flora as well, and see how birds and animals' lives intertwine with trees and shrubs. It can give you a better insight of the world around you. Practicing, experimenting and mucking around is what this video has been about. Which is what my whole channel is about. Me working out how I'm going to go about making that wildlife documentary. This is what's sort of holding me up at the minute because I'm not very good at writing speeches. So writing scripts and actually performing them, going into my little production studio, my voiceover room, I'm working out what sounds best, but I've worked out it's just speaking normally, that's what's going to work for me in making that wildlife documentary. Writing scripts is not my forte, it's something I begrudgingly have to learn and do. I don't really have anyone that can help me out in that department, my wife can, she's very skilled in that department. She started off her working life as a secretary, moving up to being a private secretary for barristers and solicitors, and has a great love of reading books and she understands 
the structure of writing book, but she doesn't have the imagination to do it, unfortunately. I have, so we should be a good pair together, but she hates doing that. <laughs> she doesn't want any part of it, but grudgingly too, she um, does it for me. So it doesn't make for good chemistry, really. You have to, to write books, we'd have to be really in tune with each other and really loving what we're doing. For me, writing is a chore. It's hard work. I don't have the words. My writing skills aren't all that good. But she's helped me out a lot, and I wrote this one myself without asking her to go over it. So it's not bad. Um, making sure things aren't wordy and all those sort of things. I've, I've come a long way. I've come a long way with that. And making normal videos, it's the same thing. Don't waffle on like I'm doing now. Keep it short and sweet. Take out the rubbish that doesn't really need to be in there. Yeah. So we're getting somewhere with this. It was an experiment with um, a format that I was thinking I'd go with to make the documentary. It's sort of what I was after. Still not quite there but it's given me a good idea of what I need to do. And also, how much footage I am need more of. Like with the wattle trees and uh, just other bits and pieces of the Agile. Just general bits. I'm lacking in that department and that really showed out there. I struggled to find what I really wanted. So I'm going to have to focus a hell of a lot on that as spring comes up. So there you go. A little bit of a behind the scenes. What I was up to this week. New raincoat, new pants. We're in heaven at the minute. Luxury all over. Expensive gear, of course. I never buy anything unless it's a bargain. And this was an awesome bargain. I mean, look at this. You can actually shake the rain drops off. I've never had a jacket do that before. Am I easily uh, excited about nothing probably but uh absolute bargain but of course whenever i go online shopping i say to my wife look at this half price absolute bargain she goes for the conspiracy theory straight away they do that to suck you in that's a normal price i bet you tries to take away my joy but I know, I've researched, they're a bargain, don't you worry about that. I mean, look, how could it not be with a name like that? Katmandu! I'm walking in the rain with my awesome new gear on. Just thought I'd brag about it. Yeah, that's all, that's all you're getting. Will we get another flood? It definitely seems like it. Look at that, it's almost bursting its banks. There's where the snake lives, that, on that log up there. We are getting close to a flood. It's going to keep raining all day. It's not heavy rain, it's just constantly steady. And this is gonna go right through the whole weekend. So, might have another video in the making here. Headlines, Derek's office gets flooded. That's all. That's all I've got for you. Well, I'm out for my afternoon walk, and as you can see, my thinking log is underwater now so we're getting closer to a major flood in the reserve now it may not happen but i'm expecting a lot more rain overnight we've got a little tiny bit of a lull at the minute it's supposed to be getting a lot more rain overnight and through tomorrow so i would think that it'll a big possibility it'll be a major flood by morning come out first thing have a look with my new Amazing, awesome gear on. 
see whether the old snake gets flooded out yeah so it'll be interesting if it does that means I can uh, bring my good camera out and start filming the reserve flooding might add a bit to my documentary may not even make it in but I need more footage of this sort of thing yeah waffling on keep going for my afternoon walk but it's uh, looking good for a big flood that's all no flood as you can see but the birds are happy all chirping this morning very nice so we might have a reasonable morning bring you over me over into the sun a bit better so practicing learning more about writing scripts and voiceovers not an easy task <laughs> we're getting there we're getting there i always find it amazing as soon as i walk into my my uh, voiceover room my mouth starts getting a bit funny i've been told you can use uh, apple just take a piece of apple in there with you and suck on it every now and then it helps with all the phlegm in your throat but it's weird i mean i'm just looking at my speech uh, reading it back to myself i think yeah no nah, that that's good don't need to do any more let's shoot off into my uh, voiceover room and do it and all of a sudden you find it hard to talk all this stuff's in your mouth you get a bit of phlegm there you take a glass of water in it it's weird it really is weird but anyway uh let's have a catch up with nesting box number one doing great guns this is the furthest i've ever gone studying the agiles in my nesting boxes they usually you know for one reason or another they've uh, left i had a sugar glider take over last year and yeah it just wrecked it all so it's doing well they're staying in there it's swapped from being just uh, juvenile females to now mixed a lot of older females moving in there is about four or five there's eight generally and then it you know that changes daily every couple of days you might have a few more blow-ins so you can get up to about 13 or 14 to 15 all together sometimes so yeah it's all going really good and what i'm seeing is that dusky antichinus keeps coming and having a look inside at least twice a week weird uh, maybe i might be able to get to film that female nesting who knows but anyway <clears throat> That's all I've got for you for today. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel and get more of this amazing random stuff, click on my pretty little face that's down here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. If you want to go to my channel and have a look at all the other things I've been doing over the years, click on my icon right here at the end of this video. Take you to my channel. There's over a hundred videos to choose from there. From uh, me talking about camera reviews camera accessory reviews anything i buy i'll uh, do a little review on it and give you my honest opinion talk about photographing and filming in a forest environment like using a flash those sort of things so there's plenty of tips there for you so go and have a look there'll be something there of interest to you i am sure now just remember if you don't do you don't get so get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife as soon as you're allowed to with all this coronavirus lockdown stuff yeah catch you on the next one stay well stay safe get out in the forest at least for a walk see ya